what's your do, how, you know, where we are in business, where we're going, what the future lies. So, yeah. Have you interacted with what other people said? So okay. it's going to be as informal as possible. Yeah. Um, but really getting to the heart of what you feel. Okay, cool. And just on that note, uh Business leadership shaping the future. We have a record number of guests tuning in today, and I think it is testimony to business leaders, and in fact, all people in business, recognizing the critical role that leadership plays in creating successful and sustainable businesses. I think too that today's webinar is the result of the first webinar being such a huge success. It brought together great leaders, as it is done today, to share experiences, thoughts, visions, etc., to help ensure the growth and sustainability of our province and to the South African economy at large. A special thanks to our hosts, Roshan Mora of Mora Incorporated and Grant Adlam of Top Business who have drawn together these great leaders and personalities to share their wisdom and experiences with us. I am David White, facilitator of today's event. And like our guests, I too am looking forward to hearing the messages from our panelists. The brief the panelists received is to represent the province, sharing personal messages that will help other business leaders and their teams build confidence and their ability to lead and grow their own organizations. Uh, thank you to our panelists. Our first speaker this morning is Jonathan Naidu, CEO of Smart Exchange. I've known and admired Jonathan and his work at Smart, at Smart Exchange for many years. Smart Exchange is an exceptionally successful business incubator, specializing in media, information, communications, technology, and the arts sector. Smart Exchange started in 2004 and has branches in Durban, Kwamashu, Port Shepston, and is currently working on a rural incubator rollout. Smart Exchange is also big on innovation and to date has funded 30 innovation products. Jonathan, please may we ask you to share your leadership story with our guests. Well, thank you, David. Uh, good morning to my uh, panelist colleagues and to the viewers. Uh, thank you for joining in on the session. And guys, thank you for inviting Smart Exchange to share the journey we've undertaken. Uh, but David, with that kind of intro, I think you've already done the marketing for Smart Exchange and you've kind of preempted part of my message as well today. And of course, uh, the, the main uh, theme for today is how do we grow and sustain the KZN economy? And of course, naturally growing the SA economy by implication. Um, I I'm excited actually during uh, the COVID-19 challenge and pandemic. I'm excited because I've seen exceptionally growth in the MICTE sector with the opportunities that were created with this uh, pandemic. Now, therein I want to encourage, especially the youth and the unemployed, uh, those with, that are graduates and those that are not graduates as well, to say there are opportunities lurking on the sidelines and let's not let a good crisis go to waste. And smart exchange, is that vehicle that can assist you tremendously in terms of re-engineering your career path and at the same time leaving legacy projects and doing good for the KZN economy. Now, a case in point uh, during uh, COVID-19, uh, all economies basically came to a shutdown, but the township's economies were most severely impacted simply because they were not online. 
in terms of uh, the, the products and, and the marketing, etc. And we took that as a challenge and we launched the project called Sia Digitizer. Now, if you Google that, you'll see what impacts are already happening in the township community of the pink precinct, the Quam, the Phoenix, and Tuzuma, um, Inanda, Kwamashu uh, area as the pilot project. Already we can see serious traction happening in terms of economic growth of the companies that are already digitized. I'm just using that as a pointer to say, guys, there are phenomenal opportunities out there. So when we say there is no customers, the question is, how do we now create an opportunity for customers to come on board? And that's exactly what Sia Digitizer did. We are looking at two more challenges in the townships, one specifically on waste and the other specifically on crime. And again, we're not asking ourselves, where's the customers? We say, yeah, the challenges. And when we put powerful solutions behind those challenges, we convince the customers would follow. And therein lies our new sustainable startup businesses. Now, using that kind of methodology, Smart Exchange wants to invite people with great ideas to come and join the incubator because we are convinced that we have the know-how in terms of translating your idea and your innovation into something viable. And then to existing uh, companies as well, we are saying, give us your pain statements. We want to translate your pain statements into powerful opportunities for these hungry youngsters out there who are highly energetic, but are just asking for those opportunities. So to the corporates out there, we say, let's jointly participate in leaving some powerful legacy projects that could impact and improve the quality of lives of all of our people. But therein, we're creating new jobs and we're growing the economy. So my appeal is let's co-create, let's partner one another. And remember um, the old uh, quotation that emerges from Africa. If you want to go faster, you go alone. But if you want to go further, take us all along the journey and we'll definitely go further. I thank you. Jonathan, uh, thank you so much. Uh, you know, your work in the space is invaluable, uh, giving um, first entrant opportunities uh, for business people uh, to learn the basics of running a business and also for people with ideas and innovation uh, for them to know that there's a place that they can go to uh, and receive the support they need to make the organizations successful. So thank you very, very much for that. And uh, we're so excited uh, to have your talent uh, in the province helping us. If we may... Uh, David, may I ask Jonathan a question? You may indeed, sir. Thank you. So Jonathan, thank you once again for uh, agreeing to be part of this and to share your wisdom. Um, you know, we, 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 we often hear and we quite aggressively about the fourth industrial revolution and the impact on business and et cetera. Uh, and the new buzzword now coming through is robotics and removing the manual processes. Uh, is, is Smart Exchange playing the scenario to be able to advise uh, existing businesses as to how they should embark upon the strategy? Uh, Roshan, thank you for that question. Um, I currently sit on the Premier's Human Resource Development Council. Uh, we make input at that level, uh, um, uh, advising the committee in terms of the human resource component. We do work with a few companies uh, that re request that kind of advice from us. And we always have an optimistic view. Um, in terms of robotics, the argument is job losses. The reality is yes job losses specifically to what the robot is replacing, but many new job opportunities linked to robotics, the designing, the upgrade, uh, the flexibility of it, the programming. So the challenge ahead is how do we reskill people for the new jobs 
that are coming into the pipeline due to the fourth industrial revolution. A powerful opportunity, but at the same time, we must complement government. They're putting serious incentive program uh, for the so-called blue collar workers as well. We see a new move into the CMT uh, operations in terms of the global business uh, services as well, where we know that you may not need the serious technical skills for the 4IR, but we're sensitive to those job losses that emanate in those sectors as well. But Roshan, absolutely yes. Uh, feel free to knock on the doors at Smart Exchange if you need any guidance. But we are also quite smart in the sense that we see the new opportunities for startups to engage as being service providers to the companies that want to re-engineer themselves. I uh, thank you. Well said, uh, Jonathan, and thank you so much. It's just so uh, uplifting uh, and really appreciated. Thank you. Our second uh, speaker today, Nomfondu Ngoi. <laughs> um, in is a former educator who 10 years ago uh, identified her entrepreneurial skills and formed Ignobuleto Funerals. Today, the group comprises of eight companies, has over 100 branches, of which one is in the United Kingdom and employs more than a thousand people. Nymfondo has over and over been recognized as an exceptional talent and has won awards including Top Woman in Business, Business Leader of the Year, Entrepreneur of the Year, and many others. Nymfondo is also Safpia Chairperson, and that is the South African Funeral Practitioners Association. Nomfondo, please will you share your leadership story with us? Thank you very much. Um, firstly, I would like to greet uh, our facilitator, all the panelists, um, and also all the viewers, everyone, all the business people that have joined. Um, I just want to say I'm very grateful as Unomfondo, as Itebole, to as a brand, we're grateful for such an invitation. It means a lot to us. Um, to be part of um, such engagements. Um, as you have introduced me, I'm the group CEO of Itteboletu. Itteboletu has got 10 companies underneath the group where we may, the main, the core company is funerals. All these 10 companies, they have been built around funerals. One being the FSP, that's the financial services provider, the burial company, we have the, the United Kingdom, as you mentioned. We have a catering business that caters for funerals. We have tombstones. We have our academy where we capacitate our staff since we employ more than 1,400 people presently. We have our foundation, which we use to give back to communities. We have a security company. We have a properties company. And lastly, the baby is the memorials one because um, in our industry now, as we move forward in the funeral industry, it's speaking to land, investing in memorial parks because we know there's a shortage in Devon, but we are taking care of that. We have our first park that we've bought in, in Moran Hill that we are busy setting up. So uh, mainly, uh, what I want to talk about mainly is, is um, how we've managed to, 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 to build our group to what it is today. The and also how has COVID, this pandemic affected us and how, what have we done to make sure that we stay in, in business. Um, um, we, we, like I explained, all these companies, they build around funerals. We don't do anything outside funerals. Even our catering company, we don't do events or anything. We do, we cater for our own company. And, and during COVID, the, we've seen a lot of changes in our industry. And um, people were saying out there, oh, funeral parlors, they're gonna be rich because people are, are, are dying because of the pandemic. No, that is not true. We've seen, um, because we are in, an essential service, and we offer inf essential services, we've seen a lot of change. Um, sorry, we've seen that we were not 
allowed to close uh, to close business. And while we are not allowed to close business, we've seen so much growth in, 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 in the demand, especially the PPEs, the changes in regulations by government that demanded more things done in our industry that affected us a lot, especially the smaller pillars. They were really, really affected. Government did not intervene to assist in anything. They just uh, stated regulations that were supposed to be to, to, to be to be applied without I mean no one was no one budgeted for, for the pandemic. Some companies honestly it was really really hard. Some are closing down, some are being uh, 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 I mean uh, on sale as we speak because people we were not coping in our industry. Despite the fact that um as a brand we've got 10 companies some were affected some were not that affected some were not essential services just like tombstones they had to close we had to make sure that we keep everyone on board we don't retrench people we tried as a brand to reshuffle people reallocate uh, people to other positions so that they stay uh, i mean they stay employed so it's it's been a very difficult uh, period for us as an industry, not just as it's able to itself, but we just tried to make sure that everyone got their salaries on time. PPEs, there was a month where we were spending like 2 million rands just on PPEs for the entire brand because it's been very, very difficult uh, to, 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 to continue with business uh, with those challenges. But what we've done best as a brand is we've adapted to change. When you look at all the changes that, that, that happened, for example, funerals started changing. The numbers were reduced. When the numbers were reduced, it affected catering. It affected the way we conduct funerals. They started being virtual. There were new things. We started to, 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 to use more technology for doing our funerals. Now, we had to adapt, adapt to change and make sure that we still stay relevant as well. We saw a lot of changes. Um, around how funerals are being performed and and the government again came in and said we are we are the ones that uh, uh, um, are, are, are condoning um, um that 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 that, that uh, create um um what do i say or oh, that, that that are spreading the virus because funerals people they spread the virus oh that affected us so much as well because the, the they just blamed us and and but we had to make sure that we teach our staff we teach our people through our academy we had to make sure that our staff understands exactly what is um, um how they should conduct themselves how we should curb the spread of of the virus but it was very very hard but we had an academy we had to through our foundation make sure that the the communities that we serve we, we support them back because we saw a lot of we serve in in, in 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 communities that are very poor we had to make sure that we intervene and do something through um giving away um a food uh, parcels food um, a food packs and also giving away plants for for them to plant and grow their own food because we felt that just giving them groceries was not enough but we had to 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 do more than that. We, we, give, we gave away water tanks in poor I mean, communities that are drought stricken so that they can um, uh, water all the plants that we've given them. We've been giving a lot of those orange tanks uh, uh, across the whole province of KZN. So um, we've seen um, having systems, what, what kept us strong as a brand, we, 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 we invested in systems before even maybe COVID came through that worked so better for us because at a time where people could not come to the office because they were scared of the pandemic, they could pay online, they could pay through our app, they could pay through our, uh, the stores, pay ads, they could do debit orders. We had many platforms where people could access us so that their policies do not lapse because at a time like this you don't want to have a lapse policy because death comes anytime and 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 it was risky so as a brand i think having invested in systems as a brand it helped us a lot to keep us in business to keep us in good shape 
and, and also investing in our staff with training, it, it, it helped a lot because when staff started panicking, I remember when COVID started, everyone panicked. They wanted to close doors, but we had to calm the staff down and say, we are an essential service. We can't close doors. We need to remain in business, just like hospitals. They had to stay open. We had to stay open. But what we, what we felt as, a, as, a, as, as, as an industry, not just as a double A2, is that government never appreciated us. We're not, it, it's just like they were only concerned about health services, health service, even insurance companies. Nobody came through for undertakers. When we are the ones that were so much at risk, that was so much, um, yes, uh, exposed. And, and our staff really, I don't want to lie, they did very well during this pandemic and they still continue doing well. When you see that already now the pandemic is back, we are, the funerals have increased, the number of deaths have increased. Every week we see a new trend and, it, and it's been very, very difficult, but we can't complain. We need to keep doing what we're doing and make sure that we are always there to service our people, to make sure that um, the economy uh, continues by making sure also uh, that our staff remains employed, no retrenchments. Thank you very much. Uh, Nomfondu, uh, what, what an incredible story. And uh, to know that you've come from being an educator uh, to being such a capable and talented business leader, it really is incredible. You know, what I'm seeing is a, a single-minded approach um, that you're very hands-on, uh, that you have a, a deep caring uh, for your clients and for your staff, and um, this uh, business sense, uh, which seems to, which you seem to have understood uh, so well. Nomfondu, if we can ask you one more question. Um, advice to young South African entrepreneurs, uh, what would you share with them? Sorry, the first thing I would, I would advise, please never start anything with debts. Never start a business with debts because already you put pressure on it from the beginning. What they helped us as a brand of it is that during even the pandemic, whatever pressure we're under, we, we, we did not have debts. We don't owe anyone anything. And also have reserves in a company. Um, it, was, it was very uh, stressful to see. In the first month, people were screaming, screaming for help. When, if they had reserves, at least they could have started screaming maybe in three months. As a business, don't start with debt, have reserves so that you prepare for times like this. You prepare, you prepare for disaster. And it's very important as a brand to have a disaster plan because that disaster plan and succession plan, you know, if this doesn't work, if this happens, I have plan B, I have that. If someone dies at work, if someone, for example, with us, we have a call center in Umbilo that sits 120 people. At our call center, one of our staff tested positive. Everybody panicked, but we had a plan B for that. And then we just took care of it. And then we continued this business, I mean, with business as usual. We made systems available for our staff to even work from home. So as a brand, make sure that you plan accordingly. You, it may depend whatever industry you're in, but make sure that there are systems in place. You have a disaster plan. Thank you. Nomfordi, I think that is excellent advice. Uh, I, I really hope that you are mentoring some young entrepreneurs uh, and sharing uh, wisdom with them because uh, you have so much to share. Uh, I, I am mentoring not just entrepreneurs only. I am mentoring a group of 50 girls that I adopted in my foundation. Um, I'm, I'm taking them on my five-year program where I'm just grooming them to be the best of themselves. Whether they'll be business people, whether they'll be um, uh, academics, professionals, because um, whatever they like. Because I believe that not all of us are born to be entrepreneurs. Not all of us are meant to be in business, but you need to know that you have talent, you have it in yourself to be a business person. Maybe you need to start working somewhere, then gain knowledge and save money to start that business before you start a business so that you don't start under pressure and you already have 
the leadership skills that you need that you've gained while you were learning. That's awesome. Thank you so much, Nomfondo. Thank you so much. Um, our third panelist uh, today, uh, Mr. Fricky Brooks of Brooks Facilitation Services, or better known as BFS. Uh, Fricky retired after 14 years in government in December 2018, having served in many senior positions, including CEO of KZN Joint Executive Authority, Head of Cooperative Governance and Traditional Affairs, Deputy Director General, and on many occasions acted as Director General uh, for the province of KZN. Fricky established uh, BFI in, sorry, BFS in, Johannes, in January 2019, uh, focusing on project facilitation, shareholder management, and strategic advisory to government, communities, and private clients. BFS has a core portfolio of seven catalytic projects in KZN with a combined investment value of 100 billion rand and with an opportunity of creating 250,000 jobs and many entrepreneurial opportunities. Fricky, we're so happy to have you with us today and uh, look forward to you sharing your leadership story with us. Uh, Fricky, uh, sorry, we just need to ask you to unmute, please. <laughs> oh, I got caught out by that one, my apology. Um, no, David, thanks very much. And thanks to you and Roshan and Grant for the uh, opportunity uh, to participate in this panel. And good morning also to the other panel members and to those that are joining us today on this webinar. Um, it, is a, it is a wonderful um, opportunity and it's a wonderful privilege for me uh, to be able just to share this with you. Uh, I think those of you that have come across me would know that uh, I've described myself many times as uh, probably the eternal optimist. Uh, so, uh, in times of adversity, uh, I think uh, I've uh, got a little bit of an adrenaline fix. Uh, adrenaline kicks in and uh, uh, we have seen that, that out of the worst that life throws at you, like Numfundu said in a moment, that there are very, very good things that, that can emerge from there. Uh, let me also just quickly just state, uh, you, you mentioned to Numfundu that starting from an education background where she is, uh, I proudly associate myself with her. The first 10 years of my career was as a geography teacher, and I still look back at that with a lot of, 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 of endearment uh, as a foundation uh, to the career that I've had since then. David, you've indicated 40 years in government. Um, yeah, after I retired, I was obviously not yet ready to sit on the veranda and sip coffee. Um, and I was very privileged that in the time that I did serve in government that I got to work very closely. Um, with private sector and in many capacities and one saw the dedication and the potential uh, that we have in this province, uh, not just in terms of the competitive and comparative advantages we have, but in terms of the human beings and the people that we have uh, in this province and their ability uh, to be able to make a difference, not just in their own lives, but in the lives of, of many others. Um, so that's really what inspired me at that stage to say uh, I would love to go and uh, join some of those uh, uh, real exciting people and exciting projects outside. So that is where Brooks Facilitation Services was then born out of, is to say, let me go and see how I can support um, coming from government into private sector and having maybe a little bit of a better understanding now, even after two years uh, of me working outside, um, what the, the challenges are uh, looking uh, from outside in, but also looking from inside out uh, to this. David, you, you highlighted the fact that the seven projects that I'm involved with, uh, let me just quickly hasten to say, it's not me that is investing, or directly involved in the investing of these large amounts, but the project value of the, the core portfolio projects that I'm worth, uh, working on at the moment is in the order of 100 billion uh, and, um, and obviously that will be over a development period of up to the next 20 years. But more exciting are the job opportunities that would come 
uh, in the short, medium and longer term and that 250,000 jobs uh, out of these projects are, are real. Um, so just to give you an indication or a quick uh, rundown without going into too much of the project themselves, um, I have been advising and I'm a strategic uh, advisor and a facilitator on the Cato Ridge Dry Port project. Uh, now there alone you start talking about 40 billion rand US uh, 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 investment uh, over the next 20 years and it's really exciting to see where that project is and how it's moved from when we were first approached by prospective developers, a fully uh, black economic empowerment company um, that uh, came forward with an idea that's now very close to fruition. And we're very pleased to say that this uh, dry port uh, is set to become functional and operational now in January uh, 2021. Some of the other projects are uh, working with traditional communities up in Mplabe Lingana, where they're converting uh, large portions of the Manzanguenya and the Mbazwan state plantations from uh, timber to macadamia orchards, um, conserving the environment in the area, the current plantation um, operations there are non-sustainable, absolutely not sustainable, uh, has done serious damage to the water table in the area, an area that's already very water scarce. And through a macadamia project there, they've got an opportunity of creating more than 35,000 jobs. Um, the investment potential there uh, is probably close to 20 billion rand as well. And the nice thing about that is that in the last year and a half, uh, it's moved from zero to having three uh, fully operational um, um, uh, components in place where the nurseries are in place. First 60 hectares is already planted uh, and a lot of other very positive things are happening around that. Showing that um, rural development is possible on Ingmanyama Trust land, uh, and that uh, if you have the right model, the right approach, the right partners, you can get a fully functional and uh, a, an economic um, viable and feasible project uh, going in, in what is currently one of the most poorest areas of our province. Um, the other projects, without going into detail with them all, the Tugela Lifestyle Resort, the new medical tourism facility um, coming in at uh, 3.6 billion rand bringing international medical tourists to our province uh, and uh, creating a wonderful new destination around medical tourism just on the northern bank of, of the Tugela River. We've all heard about the Blythdale Coastal Resort. Uh, that has attracted uh, 850 million rand investment just this year, uh, working with the land beneficiary community. And um, David, as you indicated there, that uh, part of my focus is largely on supporting these private sector developers and making sure that their stakeholder engagement processes, stakeholder management is done, that they engage properly with the various structures and spheres of government uh, to obtain all the regulatory approvals that they need in the process. Um, no shortcuts, doing everything by the book, but doing it just much faster. And by doing that, there's obviously a lot uh, to be saved in the process. Now, um, just the one thing uh, that I, come to learn uh, having and which my experiences are having left government moving into a private sector venture and by the way the company is literally it's a one-man band and I do refer to myself as well as a one-man band and therefore when you talk leadership uh, you start wondering well who am I leading um, and uh, what I've learned in my career both in government and now the short private sector career that I've had is that leadership is leadership but management is management whether you do it in government or outside government, um, it stays the same. And leadership is really the ability for me to create a collective vision uh, and then to lead, um, support and enable and inspire others to, to pursue that vision. Now, uh, personally, I'm inspired by positivity. Uh, I would like and I've always tried to surround myself with positive energy, um, which comes from integrity a respect for others, uh, compassion, um, creativity, which I think we have all seen a lot of in the last year, determination, uh, just to mention but a few. And I've I realized over, over time that for me, before I can help and support others, uh, I need to be sure that I've got myself firmly grounded first. Uh, if I'm not inspired, if I'm not positive, I can't go out there and ensure that I inspire and make others positive uh, in the process. So um, some of these uh, leadership abilities, one has also seen that um, in times uh, of adversity like we've had in 2020 and 
particularly as you hear Numfundo also saying the challenges that she faced with her business uh, has brought out um, obviously a lot of the worst in people but it's also brought out a lot of, of the best in people uh, that one could see. Those that have realized that uh, I'm sure that most of you would have read the book uh, Who Moved My Cheese. Uh, I think a lot of you may have realized that uh, not uh, who moved my cheese, but you realize that your cheese has been moved and uh, that you are going to be compelled to move out and to find uh, maybe more tasty and more cheese out there. And for those that are really prepared to work, uh, that are prepared to, uh, to change, that are prepared to take on uh, the new opportunities and uh, Jonathan with uh, the four, four uh, IR processes that he's leading with our youth, saying us that are a little older, we don't need to stay behind. There's a lot of scope for us to catch up and to participate in this wonderful new environment that we're out there. And um, I would like to close by saying that uh, I think uh, there are great things happening around us and, and we've got to decide ourselves uh, whether we are going to get out there and do it, uh, be part of the team that brings government and business together because there's no sense in us pointing fingers at one another uh, because if we can't do it together, we're not going to do it at all. Um, we just got to get on with it. Uh, so get out there and do it. Or uh, you've got to decide whether you're just going to stand around watching others do it. Or even worse, please don't be part of the team that eventually will just wonder what happened. Thank you very much. Gosh, uh, Fricky, thank you so much. And uh, thank you for not uh, sitting on your veranda with your cup of coffee and your block of cheese and uh, getting back in and helping us to create opportunity and bring confidence. Um, you have so much uh, experience uh, to share with us and uh, I can see that you're willing to do uh, just that. Um, Fricky, I'm sure Grant uh, has a question uh, that he would like to pose to you or to make a comment. Grant? Hi, Fricky. <laughs> I, I, didn't, I didn't actually have a question, Fricky, but I, I, I really find, find whenever you speak, it's 100% it's inspiring. But the way you ended that is don't be part of the team that wanted what happened. I think everybody must just hang on to that because we're all sitting blame and we, everything that you say is so relevant. We need to find a way to, to work together to get to, to the next day. And that's exactly what you, you're preaching and Lumfunda did the same. Jonathan does the same. It's all about collaboration, adapting, moving forward, moving systems. So I just love the way you ended that. Be part of a team that wanted what happened. That, that's an incredible way to finish. So thanks, Fricky. Thanks, Rod. Pleasure. Thank you, Grant. And thank you, Fricky, very, very much. Uh, our fourth panelist, uh, Clinton Govender, CEO of Brand Partners. Clinton has 28 years in his chosen profession. He is highly experienced and professional as a brand architectural strategist. Uh, Clinton is also registered as a chartered public relations practitioner. And he has worked with many large companies, including Unilever, SA, Coca-Cola, Nando's, Sunsilk, as well as with many universities and uh, also municipalities. Clinton, please, sir. Would you share your story with us? Morning, morning, uh, David and the rest of the panelists, as well as the participants. Thank you for this opportunity. Uh, so Brand Partners is a strategic marketing communications company, as you've seen from our portfolio. But one of the things that I picked up from what Friki uh, was saying, as well as Nomfundo, was the importance of being able to change during an environment that's changing all the time. So you can't do traditional in a non-traditional environment. So basically, this is where South Africa is poised at the moment in terms of business, as well as the world itself. And one of the things that you have to do is change the way you do business in order to see yourself succeed, to maintain your company over this time, and to ensure that you are actually moving ahead and also adapting to where the situation takes you and the ability to refocus, re-strategize, and also to allow your team to move with you. So no, companies, uh, no company is successful without having a strong team. And that's one of the things that we strive on uh, building, is to have a strong team with you. Uh, during the COVID crisis in uh, South Africa, for us as well, 
uh, especially for us here in, in KZN, we found that everything came to a standstill. But being in marketing and communications, you have to adapt and you have to know what your, where your strengths, strengths lie in order to challenge yourself and to challenge your team to give the advice to your clients, to let them know that at a time like this, uh, communications is critical, it's um, ne necessary, it is important and it's vital. Greenfield operations. So, yes, my hat's off to everybody uh, that is currently uh, in business. I think it's not easy times, it's not it's very difficult times. Uh, it's uh, the COVID did uh, teach us one thing is that we needed to start relooking at our businesses, to start re engineering how we do things. Um, some of them, them have been negative. Uh, the social side has actually been very negative for a country. Uh, economically, it's been disastrous. But I'm positive that 2021 uh, is going to be a rocker year. Uh, if we can just get people to just adhere to wearing the mask and just to adhere to some principles and easy stuff that our president has and the Minister of Health is keep reiterating. I think mean, we keep our social distance and we wear the mask. Uh, I think we'll be able to easily manage those numbers. Uh, in a small town like Putin Maritzburg, uh, you'd be quite surprised that people just don't adhere to wearing a mask. And yesterday, unfortunately, I had to, well, fortunately, I had to come to Durban to get some work done in, uh, in Ushtanga and I had to quickly get into one store in Gateway. But it's just, um, people just have this attitude, Jacks. I think, I think people are tired of COVID, so hence they're not wearing the mask. But uh, other than that, thank you to David and thank you to Grant, uh, my two partners in uh, this initiative. Uh, it's our second webinar, but it's actually definitely not the last. Uh, we promised ourselves that we're going to continue bringing the brain, the brain child, the brain kids, the successful business of KZN uh, in 2021 as well. Uh, to Andrew, uh, to Rajan, to Fricky, to Jonathan, to Nomfundo, and lastly to Clinton. Uh, colleagues, thank you very much for really sharing your successful stories. Uh, Namfudo, I take out my hat, uh, yet you're yawning, I know it's a Monday morning, uh, with the type of businesses, I'm sure there's no, there's no, uh, there's no uh, uh, clock that you're managing, but uh, also very nice to hear a young entrepreneur in our own province, uh, really a go-getter. So, and to everybody else, thank you, have a good holiday, and uh, in 2021, even if you're not, uh, a participant, please join us on our webinars. Uh, and it'd be nice to constantly share uh, the experiences and the knowledge that we have. Because I believe, I don't think government alone can do uh, everything that so it desires. I think it really needs uh, business persons that are true to the cause uh, that want to really add value. But lastly, thank you. Have a good holiday. I think we all deserve a break as much as we may not be going anywhere. Uh, I was telling, I don't know whether I was telling Clint or somebody I says, it's like now just go and make sure you go into the bottle store, have enough stock till you open, just in case the president decides to uh, close down the bottle stores in December. But uh, other than that, enjoy it, put your feet up and be safe. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, I just want to wrap up very, very quickly. Uh, Rashan, David, thank you very much for assisting me in putting this whole um, webinar together. But uh, Rajan, as you ended off there, it, it was, I think you summed it up quite nicely that it, it boils down to collaboration. If you have a look at everybody we've got on the panel here, uh, we all tend to agree that we have to go along the same lines. It's a positive approach. We do, today is what it is and tomorrow we don't know. So we just, we just got to do it for today. So, Fricky, always incredible um, advice that you've given us. And you can see how it all ties in. Fricky, what, what you're doing, just carry on doing it because the province needs it. We need that employment out there. And it's, it's incredible what you're doing. And I've been following very closely what you're doing in Katie Ridge. 10 out of 10, man. Well done. Um, Nomfundu, 
I just love your story always. It's always incredible to hear your story. And what I always love is, is the way that you bring in looking after the people and that looking after 50 ladies that, that are necessarily not entrepreneurs, but their future. Because we, I think, David, you always said that only 2% of us are actually entrepreneurs and the rest of us are different. So I love the way you recognize that and looking after everybody. It's an incredible a project that you have going there. And Clinton, I've, I've never actually, of all the panel, I've met everybody. You I haven't met, and I'd love to meet you because I think it's, it's got an incredible story that you've offered. And that energized thing that you, you take forward of building a better future, that's what you emphasize throughout your building a better future. And, and that's what we've got to do. And, and um, Jonathan, what you do at the Smart Exchange, again, it boils down to digitalization, partnerships, new apps, technology systems. All of us spoke about that. So you, you, you're in the incubator, you start all that thing, and it's an incredible thing that you've got going. So well done, Jonathan. And then lastly, but not least, we've got Andre Vessels, who is, is the odd one out because he's like the enabler on, on, the, on the panel because he helps us with systems. He's the one that's got to get it cracking. So maybe we should go to him for that advice um, because we all agree that we need better systems, better communications, better artificial intelligence, robotics, all that kind of stuff that maybe we're not that so hot on. So Andre, we might have to come to you for advice on that. So in general, Everyone in the panel, thank you very much and have a wonderful week. Thank you very much. Yeah, awesome. And just a last word from me. Uh, Rashan and Grant, I think you've summed up everything uh, so perfectly. Uh, I did want to say thank you uh, to the panelists uh, for sharing uh, with, with so much enthusiasm and heart and ability. Uh, just incredible. And uh, just say to our guests, I really hope that everyone has gained something uh, from today. Uh, I know I certainly did. And if anybody has anything they would like to contribute uh, or to share, uh, then please to get hold of Grant at Top Business directly. Uh, and uh, we'll take everything you share with us very seriously. So thank you everyone and uh, wishing everyone a great Monday. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Much. Thank you. Goodbye. Thank you. you do how you know where we are in business where we're going what the future lies so, yeah be interactive what other people said so it's, okay, it's got to be as informal as possible yeah um but really getting to the heart of what you feel okay cool and just on that note uh and uh, if possible to highlight some points that they've raised your job is to close and uh, finish everything. <laughs> yeah, I mean, you can work on a shift basis, but don't shift things to me. <laughs> Are you still in Peter Maritzburg, Roger? <laughs>